uh, payback time when it comes to collecting loans from this institution, especially in a country like China. Nigerians will also tell you that what happened between the Obuse government uh, recently and the uh, Chinese government. Now we don't know um, the situation as regards that, um, uh, that very unfortunate event. So a lot of people will tell you that this will come at a cost, that it's not free at all, and at the end of the day, if we are not able to hold our own side of the bargain, that there will be a backlash. But I did say that these uh, natural states, you know, although the headline says 50 billion GDP to Africa, I told you that about 27 billion of that is the credit. But let me correct you. What happened with Obuse and the Chinese firm was not a government to a government affair, it was a government to private company affair. So it, it's not the Chinese state taking Nigeria to court in France and the United States and seeking our potential for no, That is a Chinese firm. As a matter of fact, the Chinese government intervened, and that's why the firm began to back down the new subject, and then they said to enter into court. So, it, it, I mean, if you're using that as a case study, that's what it's a case study. Yes, with anybody, if you take a loan, if you go to a bank and take a loan, and you seek to pay back, of course, there's going to be payback, you know, they're going to squeeze your collateral. So, it's to be expected. I mean, these are not really, you know, some seven billion dollars of credit. But then, if you look at what China has been doing, and I'm not speaking for China, you know, I would rather Nigeria or even to stop our country in Canada. But if you look at what China has been doing, take a country like Kenya. Kenya owes China about $8 billion. So they owe China more than we in Nigeria owe China. But China hasn't done much damage to them. As a matter of fact, President Ruto, on this case, on this um, forum for China Africa uh, Corporation, he actually asked for a billion dollars for, and I think he's going to get it. But if you look at the upside, I think the upside are more than the downside. What we can do on our own end, for for example, all I can do to begin to, you know, just put in some safeguards. So, for example, we talk about infrastructure. China is notorious for using infrastructural projects all over the world, not just in Africa, all over the world, as a way of, uh, like, say, um, getting rid of their prisoner population. So they take prisoners, conscript them into PPE cities, and then they send them to various countries and to act as labor. So what the she says that, okay, we're going to build roads, we're going to build the we're going to build railroads. First, we want you to employ Nigerians. We don't want you to bring in Chinese countries into Nigeria to build it. And then also, on our end, we can begin to say that, okay, if you want Africa to develop, if you want Nigeria to develop, there are certain things that you can do. Now, one of the things that you can do to help us develop is this. In Nigeria, for example, you know, you're flooding Nigeria with cheap Chinese sector, and we've got, you know, a cluster in Kaduna, the textile industry, and that textile industry is suffering because of what we are doing in China. So, if you can appeal to the Chinese government to just stop that, to, you know, use some, let's say, affirmative action to stop, because if we ban Chinese textiles in Nigeria, it's not going to work. They're just going to go to the Republic, Togo, and then they're going to probably go the border. So, we need to have affirmative action so that our own textile industry can grow. Also, if you look at the Nigerian stock exchange, for instance, now, Airtel and MTN are the biggest publicly traded company of the Nigerian stock exchange. One of the reasons why is because our, our neighbors, people like that, then, for 